All right. Speaking of uh, other people that I'm over it, and I've been over it for a long time. Do we, do we still have to pretend that Elizabeth Warren is like something to be excited? Look, in a completely different political world, a pre-movement world, a pre-collapsing of neoliberalism world, a pre-Bernie Sanders world, uh, it would be fine. Well, it wouldn't be fine, but it would be, look, to have a someone with some solid plans on financial re uh, regulation, uh, that would be fine. And I, and I want to just say, too, I think the really interesting thing about Elizabeth Warren that is actually interesting historically is that some people confuse, like I, I saw somebody, it was really funny, and I, I like Thomas Frank. I think Listen Liberal is a great book. But uh, David Harvey's work on neoliberalism and Thomas Friedman's work are connected, but they're different things, right? So I saw one guy, I was talking about David Harvey in a live stream. One guy was just like, he's so poor and you just got to read Thomas Frank. And that's not true because what they're talking about is uh, David Harvey is talking about global macro trends of neoliberalism and, and supply chains and globalization and the retrench and the the reassertion of the right. And then what Thomas Frank is doing is talking about that and then specifically the uh, the mindset, the mentality of the meritocracy. And I would say, in my view, my editorial, some of the just kind of like grotesque corruption, particularly around just the modern political system and the Clintons and money and politics and so on. So connected, not exactly the same thing. And the reason I say this is because if Elizabeth, if we did not just have a purely corrupted politics, we could have people like Elizabeth Warren running politics the last several decades and it would have mitigated how bad things were, but it would not have structurally changed the game. And this really comes through. I mean, it comes through, we'll talk about the catastrophe of her healthcare proposal in a second, but in her just abominable and completely unacceptable foreign policy. It took her several days to say anything about Bolivia. And here's what she said when she finally got to it. The Bolivian people deserve free and fair elections as soon as possible. Bolivia's interim leadership must limit itself to preparing for an early legitimate election. Bolivia's security forces must protect demonstrators and not commit violence against them. Now, Ryan Grimm, who is obviously, you know, you know, a, a, I would say a big fan of Elizabeth Warren's quote tweeted that and said something to the effect of the security forces are killing protesters. The, I mean, this is such a fundamental ground level, not only just misunderstanding, but a refusal to acknowledge basic facts on the ground that it's horrifying. And it reminded us, I didn't play it at the time, a lot of us, I mean, we we should have played this, is all I'll put it. This is her in February on Pod Save America endorsing the Trump administration's approach to Venezuela. Very much. Um, quick to turn to some foreign policy, if that's okay. I'm ready. <clears throat> okay. So there is a, a humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. um, people are literally starving to death. Hospitals don't have, like gauze or band-aids, like the most basic supplies. Yep. Um, the Trump administration has recognized the National Assembly President Juan Guaido as as the president uh, and encouraged a bunch of other countries to follow suit. And frankly, what was a pretty impressive diplomatic play mm -hmm. by them. He also sanctioned Venezuela's oil industry, which is a major step, which could cut off all their supply of dollars and their ability to you know have an economy. Do you agree with those two steps, recognizing Guaido and the sanctions on the oil uh, sector? And and. If so, I mean, how do we back up a step as bold as saying there's a new president uh, and it's this guy that we named, especially given our history in Latin America? So, so I want to I want to broaden this one out just Please. a little bit. Start with the fact that Maduro is obviously a dictator. He's terrible. He's stolen this election. It's a nightmare. Pa it's a nightmare it. for the pause it. I'm sorry. It is not obvious that Maduro is a dictator at all. And this is a really big problem in the just relentless stupidity of American discourse. You could make any number of accusations against the Maduro government, some of which might be legitimate in terms of their economic policies, in terms of some of their human rights abuses. Uh, I am actually absolutely not convinced that they stole that last election. I find that to be a similar... Um, Endlessly repeated assertion with relatively thin evidence, to be fine, to be frank. But even the most hard interpretation of Maduro, 
which someone like Ava Gollinger has, and Ava Gollinger has the legitimacy to level it. And I respect and follow her work on this stuff. It's um, it's a network effect. It is not a personal one-man dictatorship. And it is still contradicted by some uh, democratic components that still function at different regional levels in the country. I mean, th this is just this generic, stupid, one-size-fits-all rhetoric that makes it sound like a North Korea situation. And it's it's just not. And incidentally, you could criticize him on, on, on cartel relationships, on how poverty has increased under Maduro. And by the way, and that is not just because of sanctions, that's because of their own policies. And that is the hugest insult to Chavez because Chavez radically cut poverty. We can have a realistic conversation about these things. But this is pure coup mongering propaganda put forward by the Pod Save Coast and, you know, co signed her by her without. I mean, she doesn't have any thought or analysis about this stuff. It, she, well, she has she no one that, that stuff. No, what? seriously. She appreciates the way that he frames uh, Maduro Absolutely. like that so she can, you know. So she can just the do the part. pablum. Yeah. But yeah, this yeah. is the problem. We've yeah. been talking about this for months now when right. it comes to Elizabeth Warren is when you don't have you know power analysis or class analysis in your politics it creates these huge missteps so you know when you're talking about even maduro for example when you think about maduro only as an individual and not somebody who's representing you know as a part of a movement who is also in conflict with another movement then you so it's like yes maduro is you know not great on a lot of different things right but when you turn it into a question of his own personal character Right. Rather than like, oh, well, he's also facing a right wing that is literally coming around and, you know, killing people in the streets. He's fighting against a right wing. He's fighting that against is an ready insurgent to, right wing to destroy democracy in that country. He's backed by the most powerful country in the world that is the regional hegemon. Yes. And you can recognize, you know, Maduro's fail, failings, but you also need to recognize the context and the situation that they're coming in. Uh, under and this is what's so frustrating about Elizabeth Warren and the same thing with the Bolivia tweet that we showed earlier when she's talking about the security forces don't attack protesters like well of course you're going to attack protesters because you've literally said it's like these people's lives don't matter in this country right and we're going the United States is definitely okay with you know supporting you know a right-wing coup in the country the military can come over and and destroy a democratically elected government so why would the security forces not be rampaging against protesters the security forces are part of the configuration of slaughter people to keep control for the new government, the, the, the coup government. Anyway, let's finish yeah. this. There's a new president, uh, and it's this guy that we named, especially given our history in Latin America. So, so I want to I want to broaden this one out just Please. a little bit. Start with the fact that Maduro is obviously a dictator. He's terrible. He's stolen this election. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for the people of Venezuela. So that's part one. Part two, this notion of using our diplomatic tools, I'm all for it. I think recognition, I think getting our allies to do it, it's a way to bring diplomatic pressure. Um, economic sanctions, mm -hmm. yeah, I support economic sanctions, but now we're going to start, got we got to turn the dial some here. We have to offer humanitarian help at the same time. We can't let people starve. It doesn't matter that Maduro is willing to let his own people starve. So, for example, let me pick a one that's at least a little easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are fleeing the country. Yeah. And that means they're loading up around the borders, the countries around the borders, the social services are under enormous strain, refugee camps are springing up. We should be leading the international community to get help to those people. All right, um, all right, I can't take sure this anymore. <laughs> and of course, what's incredible is that she's trying to create daylight between herself while she uncritically endorses the Trump Rubio approach. And this is right around the time, if I believe it was back in February, when we have this huge fake humanitarian aid convoy, which is being used as a Trojan horse to expedite the coup regime change efforts. This is all while Juan Guaido is hanging out with cartel connected people in Colombia. By the way, there's been major mass migration problems inside internally in Colombia because a country that we support uncritically and unreservedly has had human rights violations and internal abuses that exceed anything you've seen in Venezuela ever. There is no analog. And I say this as somebody, again, we're not bullshitting. Has Maduro committed human rights abuses? Absolutely. Has Maduro deployed you know, security units in ways that have been abusive and coercive? It's just not debatable. That is 
and again, he's fighting forces who do exactly the same thing with the U.S. support. And secondly, none of it, none of it remotely touches what you see in Colombia. And the United States, through Plan Colombia up through the present day with massive military aid, has supported, I mean, you're talking right-wing narco death squads that go and go, oh, this village, it might be FARC sympathetic. Okay, we're going to murder and rape literally every single person in this village. I mean, just zero critical awareness and zero smart talk about sanctions. I mean, that's the whole other thing. I don't, I don't have a problem with sanctions that target the finances and travel ability of uh, corporate or political leadership in a state. In other words, if... Some people came together and they were able to say, I don't want Donald Trump traveling to my country and we're going to free some of his foreign assets. I'm down. But any mass sanction scheme that targets a broad civilian population is a crime against humanity. And we absolutely have sanctions against the, uh, Venezuela in that vein because just as with Iran, we're trying to make the people suffer so much that they will depose the government, which final thing I'll say in this rant is another good lesson at the actual popular appetite for getting rid of this government, which is to say it isn't there. Because the poor people and the indigenous people and people of African descent, for all of the dissatisfaction, I think they're still pretty confident that the situation with Maduro will probably be better than some fucking kid backed by the Trump, Trump administration. Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy is abominable and it's it it's unacceptable to keep having a fantasy discourse about a progressive option when she's as bad as this and then bernie sanders is calling for freeing lula and let's get to bernie talking about bolivia you just watched a michael brooks show video subscribe to get them all why wouldn't you don't be foolish click subscribe below and become a patron as well Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.